Looking back, I'd say I had a pretty enjoyable childhood. Nothing bad ever happened to me. I barely ever got sick, never broke any bones, or got into fights with my cousins when I visited. I was basically a picture-perfect child, not to brag. Except one time, when I was visiting my older cousins, I experienced the strangest event, and even today, I still can tell myself that it was just my imagination. I was probably about six years old at the time, but I still remember everything about that night like it was yesterday. I was climbing trees with my cousins most of the day, and when it got dark, we went inside. My aunt and uncle went out for dinner, so it was just us left in the old house. And then I suggested it. Let's play the hide and seek. Sometimes I wonder how it would have been if I hadn't suggested that. Either way, it was Alex's turn to be it first, since he lost rock, paper, scissors, and Ray and I scattered to find a hiding place. First, I tried squeezing behind the sofa, my favorite hiding spot, but it was closer to the wall than normal. As lanky as I was, I couldn't fit that time. Alex was halfway down counting, so as a last resort, I ran into their bedroom and looked around, trying to find any place to hide, obvious or not. Thankfully, the room was quite messy, so I figured that if I hid under the desk, I would blend in enough. Anything was better than being caught without a hiding spot. As I was about to dive under the desk, I noticed my other cousin, Ray, had already beat me there. I could see some of her long dark hair peeking out from beneath the blanket she was hiding under. Alex was almost done counting, so I had no choice but to join Ray. I said to let me under the blanket with her, but when I reached out to pull some of it over me, she scooted away. I scooted closer and reached out again, whispering a really long, PLEASE, but she jerked away to completely avoid my touch. Fine, I thought, I guess that's fair anyway, since she was here before me, it makes sense for me to be the one to be caught first. I teasingly whispered that I could see her hair anyways, and she rustled around in the blanket trying to cover it, not succeeding. When I looked around from my hiding spot, I could see that it was definitely a good place, with some boxes blocking the view of the door around the corner, so if someone just gave a quick glance over the room, they wouldn't have seen us. I leaned over and whispered how this was a really good hiding spot. Ray rustled around under the blanket in response. Then, suddenly I heard Alex walk into the room. He looked around, checking under the bunk beds right across from the desk. I held my breath. He got up and walked to the closet, checking in there, before going back out of the room. I let out a quiet sigh of relief and whispered to Ray how close that was. Ray rustled under the blanket again. From outside the room, I heard both Alex and Ray shout the traditional Olly Olly Oxen Free from the other room. So I started to get up, proud of not having lost hide and seek, and said come on to Ray but she didn't move from under the blanket. That's when I realized that I had heard both of my cousins call for me to come out. I backtracked in my mind to realize that only my two cousins and I were home. 
panic fell over me as I ran to the other room as fast as I could and saw both of my cousins standing right there. I tried to explain to them as fast as I could that someone else was in the room with me and they, of course, being older, were reluctant to believe me. I tried pulling them to the hiding spot so I could prove it to them and it took some actual pulling, but I finally got them there. My heart sank when we looked under the desk. The blanket was completely flat. My cousins laughed at me as I frantically searched the whole room top to bottom and scoured the boxes next to the desk for any trace of the figure or anything I could have mistaken it for with no luck. It was gone. And still, many years later, I have no explanation of what it could have been and frankly, I'm glad I never got to see what was underneath that blanket. In the summer of 2006, I fell in with an interesting group of friends. They were all obsessed with the paranormal, and it had always been an interest of mine as well. One of the group had heard of a graveyard about an hour away that was nestled into a secluded patch of forest. Naturally, being young and stupid, we decided to get some flashlights and head that way. It took hours to find it. It was unmarked and hidden, down a dirt road with nothing else for miles. We parked the car and got out. There was a path leading into the woods, with the graveyard at the very end. It was small, only about 30 headstones in total, surrounded by trees and forgotten. The latest death date we could find was 1923. Once we were there, we really didn't know what to do next. So we sort of just milled around looking at headstones. It was incredibly quiet, no forest noises at all. We could hear our own breathing. Suddenly, a woman started screaming, and it sounded like it was right in our midst. At first, it was just short, loud screams, but then it melted into words. We could hear her begging, screaming, please, and no. We all froze. I started to stumble backwards towards the path and the car, but two of my friends started towards the woods to look for the woman. The screams ended abruptly. The hair stood up on the back of my neck. My whole body was drenched in fierce sweat. There was a feeling of anticipation, like the static before a lightning storm. Then a gunshot rang out, making all of us scream. We took off running collectively towards the car. We jumped in and slammed the doors, and as we reversed away, the headlights caught a woman stumbling down the path. My friend yelled to stop backing up and leaned out the window, calling to the woman. He started to get out of the car, but she disappeared while we were talking to her. After that, we got the fuck out of there as fast as possible. I'd like to say we never went back and that we learned a lesson, but we went back every other weekend for almost a year. A lot weird things happened, but nothing as visceral as that terrifying first night. This week, I moved into a new house. The house itself is lovely, with two stories, three bedrooms, two baths, a fenced-in backyard, and a big kitchen. The tree in the front yard is tall and strong, and does a fine job of blocking my living room windows from the street. The water pressure is fabulous, the closets are large, and the wood floors are new. The The only problem I've had so far is that my neighbors are rather loud. 
Our houses connect on one side, so we share a living room, bedroom and kitchen wall. All day long, I can hear them banging around their kitchen, watching loud movies, talking and a small child crying. It's a bit trying, but nothing I can't live with, I suppose. Now, to get directly to the thing that really concerns me, it started when I was in the shower this morning. I usually like to have music playing while I shower, but today I decided that I'd rather just enjoy the silence. The activity was fairly uneventful, until, as I was in the middle of washing my hair, I heard my neighbors talking from the other side of the wall. I couldn't make out what they were saying, but it sounded strange to me. It seemed that they were mumbling something, whispering, and occasionally laughing quietly, but I couldn't figure out how I could hear them if they were evidently speaking quietly. I thought that they must be standing absurdly close to their side of the wall in order to be so audible in the midst of my shower. I didn't think too much of this incident until I was leaving for work an hour later. As I started to open my car door, I turned back to the house, feeling like I'd forgotten something. As I looked up at my bedroom window, I realized that the neighbor's house shares a wall on the opposite side of the house from the bathroom. On the other side of the bathroom lies my bedroom closet. It's in the dustiest books that you may find in the best stories. Mm-hmm.